Charles Mumpson, often called Sweet, became one of those figures who quietly and profoundly changed the submarine surface. After receiving approval for the development of the submarine escape mechanisms, he had to go back and start at the very beginning. A door out. Submariners underwater have a fundamental problem, the physics of pressure. The sea pushes on every part of the submarine, including the hatches. Under most depths of water, there was no physical way to push the hatch open against the sea. The only known solution was flooding the entire compartment. As the water filled the compartment, the pressure would rise with it until it was close enough to the pressure outside that someone could open the hatch. This, of course, carried its own risks, namely hypothermia if the water was too cold to survive the time it would take to flood the compartment. It also ran the risk of the surviving submariners using up what oxygen they had before the pressure equalized. So, Mumson first designed a submarine escape trunk. This trunk allowed submariners to pressurize a small area, only large enough for three or four men, and then open a door to the sea and escape. This trunk would also allow the men inside the submarine to remotely close the door to that trunk if necessary, and to drain the trunk before allowing the next batch of men to go in. To double the use, the top of the trunk also had a hatch, and this was to be married to the planned submarine rescue chamber. These innovations started showing up as early as the USS V-5 in 1930. Mumson then turned to his submarine rescue chamber that had started the entire process and found a candidate for its construction in an old friend. The day he stood helpless over the wreck of the USS S-51, there had been an unusual structure welded to his submarine, an airplane hangar. The idea of using a submarine as a secret scouting vessel, complete with reconnaissance planes, was an idea toyed with by several nations. The S-1 attempted it for five years, before the Navy decided that the benefits were not worth the effort. The hangar had been removed, and now, knowing it was watertight, well-built, and able to withstand any pressure a submarine was capable of safely experiencing, Mumson turned it on its end and made a prototype bell. This would eventually evolve into the submarine rescue chamber. But the third device Mumson worked on would end up bearing his name in popular culture. Before the Navy cleared the way to create the trunk or the chamber, Mumson privately worked on this device with two friends, a salvage diver and a builder. Originally created out of patched inner tubes, these men would secretly test their devices in the Navy pool after it closed for the night. These experiments were risky, and Mumson and his friends learned about the physical hazards of diving, like the bends and oxygen toxicity, the hard way. As a result, Mumson also started to experiment with various gas mixtures, which would eventually permit diving below 300 feet deep. From the pool, they graduated to the open ocean, where Mumson would descend in a pickle barrel to the same 110-foot depth the S-4 had been lost in. Once, the lines on the barrel caught him, and he had to struggle to get free. When he finally surfaced with the lung, he realized he had less than 30 seconds of air left. But he had made it. The men of the S-4 could have survived. And now, at least, their brothers would have a chance. Mumson's invention, named the Submarine Escape Device, and quickly dubbed by the press as the Mumson Lung, was finally approved and went into production. The salvaged S-4 was given over to Mumson and his dive team to train submariners how to escape with their lungs. Eventually, a 100-foot-tall submarine escape tower was built at New London. Submariners finally, as war loomed, had the comfort of knowing that if the worst came to worst, they now had a chance.